Everybody, this is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Let's have a word of prayer and we get right into today's Bible lesson. Father, we praise you. We thank you. We open our hearts and minds to receive revelation from heaven concerning what you have done for us, Lord Jesus, what you have done in us, and what you are continuing to do for us and in us. We just praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you join me again today in welcoming Jerry Savelle to this broadcast? Thank Jerry, you, this has been a dynamite two weeks. Praise I God. I just have, I'm telling you, this is. We've had some fun, haven't we? <laughs> oh, it's just so rich and so good. And I'm reminded again, um, like we were talking about yesterday, that the, the path, the light of the righteous just keeps getting brighter and brighter. Yeah. Amen. It does. And, and, and by, by saying that and seeing that, the brighter it gets, the more you see. Mm -hmm. And whatever you see in the Spirit, you can have it. That's right. Amen. That's right. Praise God. We've talked about the blessed life. We've talked about the good life. We've talked about the privileged life, which are all one and the same, what God designed yeah. for us. But I think on today's broadcast, we ought to go into Isaiah chapter 54. And here it talks about the winning life. Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. All right. And I think that's something that the body of Christ needs to become more aware of, perhaps than at any other time, because there's a lot of things going on in our world today, a lot of chaos, a lot of trouble out there, and people are hurting and suffering, and a lot of people don't know where to turn. Uh, a lot of people have given up, and caved in, and thrown in the towel, and, and they don't have to. God's people no, you don't. don't have to give up. No, you no don't. matter what Satan throws our way, thank God, we have this promise from God. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Yeah. Now, the Amplified Bible says, triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. That says that it is my covenant right to be triumphant, that I never have to settle for win a few, lose a few, that it is my covenant right that I'm triumphant Absolutely. always. Hallelujah. Now, here's the reason why. You know, just like I just did, I started Isaiah 54, 17. Most people do. Let's back up to verse 16. I love this. This is God speaking. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. I have created the waster to destroy. Now, if you don't go study the rest of the Bible, it sounds like that God is saying, I'm the one who created the devil for the purpose of bringing destruction. Yeah, and that's but not But that's accurate. not what he's saying. No, that's not that's accurate. That's not what he's saying at all. God did create Lucifer. He wasn't known as the devil or Satan. When he created Lucifer, he was an anointed cherub. In his original state, he was the anointed cherub. He held a high-ranking position in the kingdom of God in heaven. But the Bible said, pride was found in him and that he uh, decided that he wanted to exalt himself above the Most High God. And he, lured, he, he led uh, one third of the angelic host against the throne of God. And when he did that, attempting to overthrow God, he learned firsthand why God's called Most High. Yeah, <laughs> he did. <laughs> yeah, and God kicked him out of heaven. And from that point, he became that old dragon, the serpent, yes, the devil, and Satan. Now, here's what God's actually saying. I am the one who created Lucifer. He became Satan, the destroyer. 
God's not saying, I created him for the purpose of destruction. No, because it said in the day that he was created, he was perfect. That's right. And iniquity was found in him. That's right. So he didn't, he wasn't a destroyer when he was created. Satan became a destroyer by choice. Yes, he did. All right, trying to exalt, he, he wanted to be higher than the Most High God. But you don't get any higher than no. the Most High God. There's no such thing as most or high. It, most no. high is as high as it gets. Then he became the destroyer. And I believe this is what God is saying. You got to read verse 16, then verse 17 becomes even more powerful. I believe what God is saying is this. I created Lucifer. He became Satan, the destroyer. And since I'm the one who created him, I take full responsibility for his actions, and I promise you, nothing he attempts to do against you will prosper. So none of these weapons will work. I'll none of them it. will work. <laughs> I'll see to it, praise God. You know, now, hey, that flows right in with the third chapter of the book of Malachi when he promised to the tither, you prove me in this. Mm -hmm. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Right, praise God. I, I created him, I'll handle him. Yeah. You just believe me. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that good? It, isn't that a good life where yeah, you know yeah. that no matter what the devil tries to do, I'm covered by God. Yes, <laughs> sir. That's a good life, oh, man. That's is. a privileged life. That's it, a blessed life. It is. No weapon. Oh, and man. And then I love that amplified version. It says, triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. It's as much my right to live in total victory as it is my right to be saved and go to heaven. You're Hallelujah. supposed to. That's right. I'm supposed to be blessed. I'm supposed to be in victory. Yeah. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. Amen. So that's the same thing in the New Testament. That they, they match right there, don't they? They do. God promised it here. Jesus bought and paid for it with his blood. And Paul picks up on it and says, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph. Now, the, the religious man is saying, there's no way you can win all the time. Oh. There's no way that, that uh, uh, you can live in total victory. Well, some, that person needs to go argue with God because he seems to think yeah. you can. Amen. You know, when I first started uh, Little League Baseball, I played baseball all my young life. And I'll never forget the first Little League team I went out for. Man, we practiced for weeks and weeks. Then we had our first game. And the coach lined us all up out there on the ball field, getting ready to play our first game. Man, we were excited. Bunch of little old boys. Man, we got our uniforms. We are ready to play. And that coach walks up there, lines us all up and says, now boys, it's not whether we win or lose today, it's how we play the game that counts. I think I was seven years old and I thought that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Yep. And it's yep. still the dumbest thing. I thought, well, if it doesn't matter whether we win or lose, why'd we do all that practicing for? Why didn't we just all show up? Nobody know each other. Nobody know their position. If it doesn't matter whether we lose or not, why do we practice? Well, it mattered to me. I went to the extent of showing up every day to practice. Losing's not fun. It mattered to me whether we won or lost. Championships are won. Uh, you go to championships if you win. You know, ask, the, ask the, the, the lady who's been told that her little child is dying of some incurable disease. Ask her if winning or losing matters. Now, that same principle is applied to that situation yeah. by carnal-minded uh, preachers and, 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 and that, that whole religious uh, mindset. Well, you know, we win some, we lose some, and we never know. You just never know. You just never know yeah. how these things turn out, but one thing we know, and da-da-da-da-da. It's all on that equalizing of the curse and the blessing. And that ain't right mm -hmm. because Jesus has given us victory over death. He has given us yeah. the triumph in life. Yeah. You play the game right, you win. That's right. Well, I discovered this about baseball. Why do teams lose? Errors. Yeah. They didn't play the game right. Play the if game. you get those errors corrected, then you're going to win. And it's likely you'll win every time. 
That's the reason they call it errors. Yeah, because you didn't yeah, play the game that's right. That's right. You didn't you play know? it right. Well, praise God. This is our manual for playing the game right. Well, you play this one right, and I'm telling you, is and and you come to a place in His favor that when you make an error, He says, "Hey, don't sweat it, kid. I'm right behind you." Yeah. <laughs> I love the fact that He's the umpire too. Oh yeah. And yeah. I get more than three strikes. <laughs> I get to bat until I hit yeah. one. <laughs> My father's umpire this game. That's, That's right. Good, praise man. God. <laughs> I love what. Uh, uh, the Apostle Paul tells us in Romans chapter 8, he says that if God be for us, then who can be against us? That's Romans 8, 31. And the message translation says, how can we lose? How can we lose when God is for us and not against us? Man, now, man. tie that in. Go back to Isaiah 54 and start in verse 9 because I know <sighs> God gave you some great revelation there. Oh, I'm telling you. He's for us, not against us. In that eighth verse, he said, In a little wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment. Now, when did that happen? In the 53rd chapter. Mm -hmm. That when, when Jesus took upon himself sin, sickness, fear, the whole curse, yeah. that was that little moment. But with everlasting kindness... Now, Jerry, this, this is a, a covenant word. Mm -hmm. It has to do with, with it, it, the Hebrew word is hesed. It has to do with that covenant attitude. It is, um, it's if when I'm for you, everybody else better watch out mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm covenanted to you, little brother. Yeah. One, an enemy comes against you one way, I'll see that he runs seven. That's what God yes, told Abraham. Yeah. And he said, this, that with everlasting <clears throat> covenant kindness will I have mercy on you, saith the Lord, your Redeemer. Yeah. So now who's talking here? The Redeemer. Hey, your Redeemer's talking. Listen up. This is as the waters of Noah unto me. Let me ask you something. Is there ever going to be destruction of the earth again by water? Never. Never. It ain't going to happen. God promise. Made you stop oath. nearly any Christian on the street and ask him that yeah. question. If they don't know anything else, they know mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. Oh, no, man. And oh, they know no. that's what that rainbow is That's about. what that rainbow is for. And that's a covenant promise, wasn't it? Yeah. He put the bow in the sky to remind you this ain't never happening again. Right. But, oh, Jerry. Oh, Lord, <laughs> listen to what he said. This is as the waters of Noah unto me, for as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with you nor rebuke you, for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my covenant grace shall not depart from you, and neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that has mercy on you. <laughs> <Hallelujah. laughs> God, I done preached me happy, man. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. That means that God will never be mad at us again. Not again. Never. I don't care how bad you fouled it up. Yeah. You don't come to him and him say, I ain't having nothing to do with you, you, you jerk. Look what you did yesterday. Never. Never, 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 never. It ain't going to happen any more than the flood of water is going to destroy this earth. Mm. He swore it. Yeah. You come to him and you say, oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord, I missed it. Oh, God. He say, okay. All Got right. I forgive you. I cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Yeah. Oh, but Lord, you don't know what I did. He don't know what you did. Hey, when you confess that sin, wasn't when he found out about it. That's right. And he's not mad about it. No. Why? He's already dealt with it. Everlasting kindness. Everlasting. <laughs> yeah. He, you're Everlasting never going to come to mercy. him. And he's got a mad on his face. Mm -hmm. He just said, come here, baby. 
Now, I know you fouled it up. Yeah, but you know, I mean, I killed my best dog, man. I mean, look yeah. what I did. Oh, no, no. No, huh? Uh-uh. No, no, no. The scripture said he's faithful and he's just to forgive us and to cleanse us of oh. all unrighteousness. That's right. So on that, if he cleansed me, when? When I confess that. Mm -hmm. If he cleansed me of, from all unrighteousness, what's left? Righteousness. Yeah. Amen. All that's left is righteousness. That's it. And he said, hey, baby, come here. Come here now. Let daddy talk to you a minute. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jerry. Isn't that good? Oh, I tell you, it's so rich. They're trying to tell people, well, you don't qualify for this blessed life they're talking about. You don't qualify to live this good life he's talking about. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, sir. All you got to do is make oh, Jesus yes, Lord sir. of your life. Oh, yes, And sir. you qualify just yes, as sir. much as Kenneth Copeland or Jerry Savelle. I don't He'll care what you. you've done. He'll hear you just as quick. That's right. Jesus said, anyone comes unto me, I will for no reason cast him out. Mm -hmm. I was preaching in uh, maximum security prison one time. And there was an old boy sitting right in front of me. We were in the prison chapel. And uh, he was just what, just closest to me, to me to the edge of that table. There. And uh, I'm telling you, I, I got into some of this right here. And Jerry, he couldn't take it any longer. He jumped and he screamed. You thought somebody stuck him, man. Mm -hmm. He jumped and he screamed. He went to running around this room. Ah, he just, he did. Whoa, God. And he up and three turns around the room and fell right in front of me and said, Oh, Brother Copeland, Brother Copeland, put your hands on me. Put your hands on me. I laid my hands on him. Oh, Jesus. He just is going. And he said, Oh, I'm going to preach this gospel, brother. He said, I want to preach this. Well, I, I was talking to the chaplain after had he kind of got mm -hmm. settled down and they, they uh, got, got him back in his seat there. I said, tell me about him. I said, uh, you know, how much, how much time is he doing? He said, 700 years. <laughs> so no, I didn't need to ask any patients. He'd been ugly somewhere down the line. Yeah, right, real ugly. But see, I mean, God blessed that old boy. Yeah. I mean, the word got in him. Why? Mm -hmm. He ain't the man that did the crime. Yeah. That old man died. That old man died. Yeah. And he got a revelation of the fact that God wasn't mad at him. Yeah. God wasn't holding it against him. Now, uh, whether God does a miracle and gets him out of prison, which has been done it's before. It's been done. Or if he preaches in that prison the rest of his life, God sees it as a job well done. I had an old boy in my Bible school one time, spent 21 years in prison, most of it in the hole, and God got him out, and he <laughs> graduated from my Bible school and went to preach the gospel all over the world, praise God. Isn't that a marvelous thing? And he was in for life. And God got him out 21 years. Praise he had, a, had a, a, a group of Christians come through there witnessing. And this one lady, you know who I'm talking about, Bear and Dove Morgan. Yes, I do. And old Bear, they called him Mad Dog when he's in prison, you know. And, and Dove come in there witnessing with a bunch of church people, you know. And the Lord pointed Bear out and said, there's your future husband. <laughs> and I mean, this guy's bad. Oh, he yeah. is mean. I yeah. mean, he, he's, he's in for life. And God super, and she got him led to the Lord, you know. God supernaturally got him out of there. And the first thing they did was come to my Bible schools. Graduated there, went to preaching all over the place, praise God. Well, you remember, he came in in a morning service of the motorcycle rally yeah. that we were having here on, on the mm -hmm. property. And he walked in there that morning. I was speaking at the morning service that morning. This was one of the first rallies we had. Yeah. And we still had the, the meeting set up out there in front of that small hangar before we had the big one. And they'd set this flatbed trailer up out there. And I, I was just about to walk up the steps on it to be able to preach. And he and Dove walked in. Well, I didn't know who they were. Mm -hmm. And... He walked over to me. I mean, he was just zero yeah. in on me. And he said, 
I just got out. I just did, what was it, 21 years? 21 years. I just did 21 years. I came straight here. Mm -hmm. And he had this pendant that he had made for me. And he said, I come to bring this to you. Because I want you to know how much I love God. And he put yeah, that on me. Yeah. And he just started crying. He, just, he yeah. was a bear of a man. He was. And he just came, old oh, bear so tender. He just, he just couldn't. Oh, God, here he went. Oh, man. And then here I went. Oh, uh, yeah. you know. You know one, one, oh, one day so at the much. Bible school, the Lord told me to give him a brand new Harley I just bought. And, uh, <laughs> or I'd just been blessed with. I, had, I didn't have, I don't think, 500 miles on it. And uh, so I told my uh, director at the school, I said, have everybody, have everybody out in the parking lot when I pull up there. And I rode that brand new Heritage Soft Tail Classic in there. And I said, uh, I've been teaching you guys about faith, about seed time and harvest. Now I'm going to demonstrate it. And I said, Bear and Dove, come up here. I said, I'm giving you this bike, and I want you to use it as a tool for evangelism. Old Bear just started crying, and when he quit crying, he said, Brother Jerry, it's the first Harley I ever owned that didn't steal. <laughs> 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 and you know what? He left on that thing and went to the, to the grocery store while Dove went in to get something. He sat out there still crying over that bike, and some guy walked up and saw him, and he said, sir, are you all right? And he said, yeah, I'm all right. And he said, what you crying about? He said, God just gave me this motorcycle. He started witnessing to him. His first convert on that motorcycle was a backslidden preacher. <laughs> and and led him to the Lord. I hadn't heard about that. <laughs> my, my, you know, my, something? my, my. Yeah, it's something. Yeah. Yes, sir, it's something. And talk about a man who began to enjoy the good life. I, I looked up one day, and I'm, I'm preaching in Wales. I'm in Newport, Wales. And I look and there's Bear out in the audience. I'm thinking, how in the world did he get over here? Now, 21 years in prison, you don't get a passport anymore after that. You know, you That's don't, right. You don't yeah. get to, that privilege anymore. That's right. And God was showing him that he was indeed a new creation. And that old man had died and passed away, and God got him a passport because somebody over there asked him to come give his testimony. And he Isn't was enjoying it? newness of life. Now you think about that. Yeah, not something. Oh, praise God. I'm telling you, God is so ah, good, mm, and he mm, wants his mm. blessings and his benefits manifesting in our life every day. Every day. Hallelujah. Every minute of every day, day in, day out, until you finish your course. With I, joy. With <laughs> joy. Amen. Yeah. I serve the Lord. And he has blessed my bread and my water, which means every provision has yeah. been blessed. Yeah. And he's taken sickness and disease from the midst of me, and he causes me to fulfill the length of my day. You, know, you can understand why David would say, <laughs> and I'll declare his faithfulness to my yes, generation. To my generation. <laughs> yeah. And he said, who am I? that you take me out of the sheep shed and make me king of this great nation. Oh, can't you just hear him, man? Oh, glory to God. Our time has come. This world full of sin and chaos has been begging for a manifestation of the sons of God and you and I and all like us, praise God, our manifestation time has come. Hallelujah. Brother Jerry and I will be back in just a moment. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The 2013 Canada Victory Campaign, May 9th through 11th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Hershey Center in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Living Victory West Coast Faith Encounter, Anaheim, California, May 31st through June 1st with Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher. The 2013 Southwest Believers Convention, July 1st through 6th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas. Always on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast on Friday, 
uh, is offering day because of instructions that the Lord gave me many years ago concerning this. And here's, here is the scripture that he instructed me to read and to minister this offering on unless he specifically says to do something else. Now, it is talking about, he said over here in, in Galatians 5, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the pressures of the flesh for the flesh uh, presses against your spirit and your spirit then presses against your flesh and they're contrary one to another. But then he comes over here in this sixth chapter and he says, let him that is taught in the word respond unto him that teaches in all good things. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh or to the dictates and leadings of his five physical sense man, this natural man, shall of that natural man reap corruption. Or in other words, if you don't put the word in first place, then you're going to, you, you will sometime or another, you're going to yield to the pressure of the flesh. But if you sow to the spirit, you shall of the spirit reap life. Zoe, the Greek word, the very life and essence of God. So don't be weary in well-doing for in due season, we will reap if we faint not. So now he's saying, once you hear somebody teach you the good things of the word, you receive it, you inquire of the Lord, and you respond by sowing back into that ministry, that's when you take possession of that word, you sow unto that life that's in you, and it becomes rooted. Amen. Father, we pray, reveal to your people, please, what their part of this ministry is, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, you just obey the Spirit of God. Amen. You're blessed. We're blessed. And this is Kenneth and Jerry reminding you again, we'll see you next time. Go to church this weekend. Either start a revival or a riot, one of the two. I mean, man, you know, go rejoice in the things you've learned this week. Jesus is Lord. Continue to grow in God's Word and build your faith. This week's Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. Receive God's great grace abounding toward you and live in the blessing.